Okay, so I saw on the news today that Celine Dion, the professional singer, has stiff person syndrome. And I'll explain what that is. My name is Brandon Bieber. I'm a neurologist, neuroimmunologist, and so I do treat this condition. It's quite a rare condition. It's been reported by you know some people in the media to occur in only about one in a million people. I suspect that it's somewhat more common with that just because in my career, I've probably seen maybe 10 or 15 people with the condition. And if it was one in a million, there are only around 330 million Americans. So you figure 330 people with this disease in the country, it'd be unlikely I would see such a high percentage of them. So it's probably a little more common than that, but definitely on the order of one in 100,000 or several hundred thousand. So this is an autoimmune disease that can cause muscle stiffness and contractions and pain. And it's of unknown cause, but it has an association with type 1 diabetes. About 30% of people with this condition have type 1 diabetes. And the reason for that is because they're associated with the same antibody, which is anti-GAD. And this is actually a blood test for the condition. About 70% of people with stiff person syndrome have anti-GAD, which stands for glutamic acid decarboxylase. And this is an enzyme involved in the creation of the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid, which is involved in inhibition. And so if you have antibodies preventing you from forming the neurotransmitter involved in inhibition of neurons, you can get excess stimulation of neurons and muscle contraction. There's another antibody that's associated with a condition called anti-amphyphysin. Now, it's associated with type 1 diabetes, but only a very, very small percentage of people with type 1 diabetes have this condition because it's very, very rare, and some people don't have measurable antibodies. Now, what are the symptoms of the condition? Well, we can see things like muscle pain and muscle spasms, and classically, the disease affects muscles of the axial spine, especially the low back, and people can just have these this increased tone and contraction of muscles and have a very stiff and sore back. And early on, it's almost never diagnosed just because it could be very similar to other conditions like just lumbar spondylosis, arthritis of the back, or the autoimmune condition, ankylosing spondylitis, which are totally different diseases. But early on, it could just cause like a stiffness and awkwardness of gait. And it can affect different parts of the body. It can affect the limbs. It can sometimes affect the voice. And about 25% of people with this anti-GAD syndrome, it actually affects the cerebellum, the back of the brain involved in coordination, and can cause clumsiness of gait and clumsiness of movement. And in a video with Celine Dion where she talks about the condition, it doesn't seem like she has that form of it. I presume she reports that she has a history of muscle pain and spasms that was sort of undiagnosed for a while. I presume she has more of the typical stiff person syndrome, probably with like a lot of axial increased tone, but who knows what her exact symptoms are. So typically what might happen is someone has these symptoms, they're seeing different doctors, it's attributed to something else like arthritis of the back. Eventually maybe someone examines the back and realizes there are these massive paraspinal muscles with increased tone. It's sort of a very distinctive exam sometimes, someone with stiff person syndrome. And then someone thinks maybe we'll do the blood test and sure enough, someone may have these anti-GAD or anti-amphyphysin antibodies. There have also been some reported abnormalities in cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that could be obtained with a spinal tap, but really no definitive testing there. There are no imaging studies that can diagnose it. And even with a, an electromyogram, you can't really definitively diagnose it. So it's mostly diagnosed based on history, exam, and blood tests. And again, only 70% of people have this antibody. I don't know if she does or not. So uh, it's an autoimmune disease and it has variable severity. Sometimes it can be quite mild early on. Maybe it could be just mistaken for a sore back or like clumsiness of gait, that kind of thing. Uh, but it can be quite severe. You know, if the back is very stiff, that really makes it difficult to walk. And it can also cause stiffness of the limbs, which can be very disabling, and even stiffness of the vocal cords and other aspects of the body in severe cases. And it can actually also sometimes cause weakness of the limbs. 
And now, this is not a progressive disease. It's not a degenerative disease like Alzheimer's disease that just gets worse and worse and worse. It's kind of a variable disease. Could get worse, could stay the same, could get better. And of course, there are varying severities. And there is treatment for this condition, and some people could get quite a bit of improvement. And so Celine says that, you know, she's going to take some time off from her tour. Uh, interestingly, I was, uh, someone in my family was potentially want, going to go to one of her events, uh, so they may not be able to go, interestingly. And, but hopefully she'll be able to return if she's improving later on. It makes sense that she would want to focus on her treatment and recovery. So what is the treatment of the disease? Well, some people, if it's not that severe, it's treated symptomatically, meaning that we don't really treat the underlying cause, we just treat the symptoms of muscle pain and stiffness. And sometimes it can be treated with just muscle relaxants, such as baclofen, which is a muscle relaxant, uh, a GABA B medication. It can be sedating though. It can be difficult to take that medication or can be productive somewhat. Another medication that's very commonly used is diazepam or Valium, you know, which is an anxiolytic that can be used for anxiety, but it's actually a very good muscle relaxant. It is addictive, but it can be effective for this uh, this matric this ma this uh, condition. It can be very very effective, in fact. So some people they don't need any treatment of the underlying disease if it's not that severe. Now most people do need some kind of immunotherapy. So treatments that affect the immune system, essentially immunosuppressants. Because this is a very rare disease, there are no randomized trials as far as I know. They're just sort of case reports, just based on experience, maybe some small observational studies, things that have worked for other people. And various things have been tried. Steroids have been used, such as prednisone, the same medication used to treat poison ivy. Intravenous immunoglobin has been used. This is intravenous artificial antibodies that sort of counteracts the effect of some of your own antibodies that's used to treat various autoimmune diseases. That's a relatively low risk treatment. Some uh, oral immunosuppressants such as azathioprine or imuran, that's a pill taken once or twice a day. It can affect the liver and cause low white blood cells and gastrointestinal upset. The problem with that is it takes a long time to work and so usually you would use it with other medications, other treatments like IVIG or prednisone to get a faster effect and that may be used for long-term maintenance. Cellcept or mycophenolate mofetil has been used for this. Rituximab which is a drug that kills B lymphocytes, which kind of would make sense for this condition because you're taking away the cells that make the antibodies, has been used, but no one really knows what treatment is the best, what treatment is effective, uh, you know, more than others. In fact, some of these treatments could be ineffective and we just don't know because they haven't been adequately tested. And so, you know, obviously who knows what treatment she's undergoing, but for short-term results, a lot of people would do something like IVIG or prednisone. Another treatment that has been used is plasma exchange or PLEX, which is a dialysis-like procedure to filter out abnormal antibodies and other immune factors like cytokines. And this can be effective in the short run as well. Now, what is the prognosis of this condition? Well, people with my, this is my personal experience, again, very limited number of patients, even though I'm a subspecialist in this area, is the people with the cerebellar form of the disease, they have like clumsiness and uncoordinated movements and slurring of their speech, and they may have findings of atrophy or loss of volume in the cerebellum on MRI scans. My experience is when people with this form are treated, usually it stabilizes the disease but often they don't get significantly better, unfortunately. That's just my experience that the prognosis isn't usually that great for that form of the disease. For people with the more classic form of stiff person syndrome, my experience is people usually do get better. You know, there usually is some improvement of the stiffness and weakness, and I've definitely had some patients get a lot better. Um, so, you know, I'm just totally speculating. I think there's a fairly good chance that she would return and be able to perform at some point. Now, part of being a singer is obviously being able to move around and dance around. It's kind of part of the performance. And so if you're stiff in the back, you know, obviously your performance might not be as good. And if you're a singer, there's more than just your vocal cords. You know, you're using your whole diaphragm. You have to be 
very fit and energetic to, to give a long performance, as I'm sure she does. So I, I'm sure it's more difficult than I think to give a singing performance like that. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if she returns if she's choosing one of these treatments that may require a lot of coordination, like going to the infusion center and getting intravenous immunoglobin, or getting plasma to change, or taking an immunosuppressant medication, she may want to just lay low for a while, you know, maybe take symptomatic medications like baclofen or diazepine. She may want to just focus on her recovery, do physical therapy, and not have to worry about performing. And of course, that's very reasonable and someone as successful as her, of course, she does not want to get up on stage and give a subpar performance. She wants to be on top of her game when she's performing. And you know, it's gonna take several months at the least. I'm sure she's gonna be off for a while, but I wish her a rapid recovery and hopefully she can come back and be as good as ever. There's no question about her incredible talent. One final thought is, the reason it's called stiff person syndrome, it used to be called stiff man syndrome, is simply that it affects both men and women, and so it doesn't really make sense to call it stiff man syndrome. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.